utilize adaptive equipment, help to avoid fatigue, pace activities, and protect joints. You can help protect joints by assisting use of stronger muscles, help distribute weight over many joints, encourage to change positions frequently, limit repetitions movements, help modify chores to avoid stress on joints. Mobility or free joint motion is very important. Joints and muscles must be used frequently or they will tighten up and cause contractures. Range of motion exercises will help patients to keep their motion free. These exercises consist of moving each joint through its full range of motion several times daily. The exercises can be done lying down, sitting, or standing. It is important that the patient be in a stable position with any needed support to keep the patient from falling. If the extremity is weak, the caregiver must support the part that cannot be supported by the patient. These demonstrations follow. This first demonstration will show the caregiver assisting a patient to do flexion of the shoulder. Notice the hand placement. Many times the joints are painful to pressure, so hold on to the fleshy part of the arm. Speed is also important. The motion should be slow and controlled. That means that the patient's muscles should be strong enough to keep the part from wobbling. If they aren't strong enough, the caregiver should help support the arm, but have the patient do as much of the motion as she's able. Help the patient to go to the greatest joint motion that does not cause pain. Do not force any joint to go past the point of easy, pain-free motion. There are other shoulder motions as well. The first is called abduction. Moving from the center outward. Another is called rotation. Other upper, upper extremity motions that should be done are elbow flexion and extension, wrist flexion and extension, followed by finger flexion and extension. Lower extremity motion should also be done on a regular basis. The first is hip and knee flexion and extension. Then hip abduction. Finally, ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. The motions that you have just seen can be done lying down, sitting, or standing. There should be five to ten repetitions of each motion, two or three times a day. Both sides of the body should be exercised, even if only one side is affected. You should monitor the exercise closely. Stop if the exercises cause pain. Try again later, the same day or uh, the next day. Report pain, the pain response to a nurse or a doctor or a physical therapist. The position that the patient assumes in bed or in a chair can cause serious pain and contractures. Any position, if the patient is in it for too long, will cause tightening of the joints or formation of bed sores. Therefore, it is important to encourage the patient to change positions regularly. Now, watch some demonstrations of positioning.
pillow under the knees will relieve pain and tightness in the knees and hips. But if there's always a pillow under the knees, the patient will develop contractures of the knee and hip flexor muscles, and the patient will not be able to stand straight or walk safely. So it's important not to place pillows under the patient's knees as a regular practice. The same principle holds for pillows under a patient's head. Many patients learn to sleep with two or more pillows. This causes extreme forward flexion of the neck and distorted posture. Use as small and flat a pillow as possible under the head. When a patient is weak and unsteady, you must assist them out of the chair or bed. Hold on to the patient rather than letting the patient hold on to you. Have the patient lean forward and move the hips forward in the chair. Be sure that the feet are firmly set on the floor before standing. The patient should assist by pushing up from the chair with her hands. Then wait a moment to gain balance before starting to walk. Then proceed. 